today's passage many times, but this time I noticed a few things that had never struck me before. I've always just seen it as an example of the ridiculous technicalities that the religious leaders of the time got hung up on just because someone wants to pick up their mat and carry it, that's somehow against the law because it's work on the Sabbath. So I never really read beyond that. But this time, I noticed that the man Jesus helps never asks for any help. Not only does he not ask Jesus for help, but apparently he has not asked anyone else for any help either. Or he would have been able to get down to that pool of water a little closer and have his miracle cure. Now, even if you don't have many friends or connections, one would hope that in 38 years, there'd be at least one friend who might help you get down into that water. So I had to wonder, how badly did he really want to get down into that pool? And what does Jesus say after observing him? Do you want to get well? That seems like a strange question. Why else would this disabled guy be sitting by a pool of water for 38 years hoping for a miracle? Why? What? Of course he wants to be healed, right? But Jesus doesn't assume he wants to be so when I was thinking about this, it occurred to me that maybe he's become really used to his situation over time and he's kind of adapted to it. And maybe when he first came there, he was full of enthusiasm and hope and thought he would be healed. But as obstacles presented themselves over the years, he has become discouraged, given up, and adapted to his reality. Maybe he's stuck. Some of us have adapted to some pretty challenging situations. And we live as if that is what is normal under conditions that someone else would never put up with. It kind of becomes our new normal. Even things like uh, when I was in college, the dorm room was so tiny. It seemed like it was about five feet by five feet. When I first moved in, I thought, how could anybody live in here? But I wanted my own space, and it was the only way to get my own. After a while, I really adjusted to that little space. I kind of grew to love it. And when it was time to move out, they kind of had to kick me out. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. So it had become my real, my comfort zone. Sometimes we feel like we have no choice. Amazingly, whatever we are used to becomes our comfort zone. So even if it seems unimaginable to someone else, this man, sitting by the pool of Bethesda, is sitting in his comfort zone. Now, I expected our sweet, compassionate Jesus to come over to the man and kindly help him over into the water and gently say, I feel so sorry for you. It is so sad that you've not been able to get down into that water for 38 years, you poor man. I am so sorry all these other things and People keep getting in your way, and there's always some reason why you can't make any progress. Let me carry you on over to that water and help you down into it. No. Jesus says, get up. He doesn't say it quietly either. He says it in all caps with an exclamation point. Get up. At this point, I decided the story is about more than just physical healing. It has to be a metaphor. It can be read on many different levels. Not only does Jesus tell him to get up and walk, but he adds, and take your bed with you. Now, why does he say that? Why does he need to take his bed with him? <laughs> well, maybe he's saying, take your baggage with you. Don't leave it behind. Get up and clean up the mess you made while you were down there. Not only that, but I noticed later on, Jesus hunts him down, probably much to the man's surprise, and makes a point of saying, see, you are well again. 
stop singing, or something worse may happen to you. In other words, don't blow it anymore. Turn over a new leaf. Don't go making the same mistakes and fall back into your old comfort zone. Keep forging ahead. But you have to wonder, why did Jesus go to the trouble of finding him just to say that? And what sin could a man be guilty of who sat by a pool all day for 38 years? <coughs> what kind of sinning could he be doing? I can't figure out what he could be doing wrong. So my thought is, could it be that his sin was not asking for help? <coughs> that it was staying stuck in one place, maybe wallowing in a little bit of self-pity, and letting every excuse keep him from facing his fears? I find that very often God will challenge us at the point of our greatest fears precisely because he wants us to have the chance of overcoming them. It seems like this happens a lot in the Bible. Um, in the Old Testament, God parted the Red Sea for Moses and the Israelites to cross to freedom, but first they actually had to march all the way out to the sea themselves. They had to get out of their comfort zone in a big way. And God didn't do his miracle of enabling Peter to walk on water until Peter first climbed out of the boat himself. Um, I, so I think what we learn from a deeper study of God's word is amazing things can happen if we trust God enough just to get our feet wet in one small step of faith towards him. And um, it's hard to change. So just trying one little small step can sometimes be the most powerful. Just one small little step like the young boy who gives up his lunch, the loaves and fishes, he gives it up and then it's, it's multiplied and a miraculous thing happens. It's all about expanding your comfort zone and having the nerve to do what you've always wanted to do but never thought you could do. Finding one little thing that makes you uncomfortable and trying it. And the more you try it, the more able to do it you become. I'm doing it right now, in fact. Because this is outside of my comfort zone of being up here speaking. I have to remember to breathe. <laughs> breathe. Breathing is good. So, <laughs> um, I saw our youth get out of their comfort zone when we went on the drive-by giving to search for homeless people in the park. It definitely to walk up to a homeless person and talk to them had to be out of their comfort zone. And at the armory, sitting down and having dinner with homeless people uh, was out of their comfort zone. But this is how your faith will grow, getting out of the boat a little bit whenever you get the opportunity. But it's not easy. Are you huddled in the boat with a life preserver and the seatbelt on, one leg in, one leg out? Or maybe this is you. You're out of the boat, but you're thinking the wind looks pretty bad. You risk the chance of drowning. You risk the chance of failure. Robert Kennedy said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Um, my favorite basketball player, Michael Jordan, said, I've lost 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted with the game-winning shot. You see Justin back there. <laughs> and, and missed. I've, I've missed over 9,000 shots. I've failed over and over again and again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Some say achieving your dreams is all about hard work, and there's some truth to that. My father had a lot of dreams. He designed his own tool shed and began building it in the backyard. He did put down a very nice foundation but he never got the walls up, and years later, it still lay there in various stages of decay, like an ancient ruin. He didn't do the work. Some say achieving dreams is all about luck. Some people are just more lucky. And it's true, this man at Bethesda was darn lucky that Jesus stopped by and took an interest in him. But for me, luck occurs when preparation meets opportunity. 
when you spend hours on preparation for your dream. Even though there is no hope in sight of it ever coming true, you'll be ready to answer the call when opportunity does finally knock. It will feel like an exercise in fut futility at times, but you have to ask yourself, when I am on my deathbed, what will I wish I had done? You will probably not be thinking to yourself, oh, if only I had spent more hours in the office. And I think I can pretty safely say that the man at Bethesda didn't look back on his crippled days and say, how I wish I had spent more hours sitting by that pool. When you find the place where what you're good at and being able to use it to help others dovetails, then you will feel so good. You'll experience true fulfillment of the purpose of your life like you've never felt before. I see this happening within our church. Um, Sandra volunteering her garage space to store um, donations. And the way Dawn volunteers with children who need tutoring. And Dolores, the way you donate something towards every project we work on with the youth. You're just right there. <laughs> and um, how the way he works with children who, who have speech problems. Just all throughout this church, I see people doing using their gifts to help others. God will work with us in great patience, but it's up to us to make that one tiny step towards him in trust. Jesus takes a small sack lunch of fish and bread offered by a little boy and says, put it in my hands and see what I can do with it. Then he feeds 5,000 people. A little is a lot when God is in it. We have to find a way to move ourselves one inch closer to the pool of water, a way to say yes to standing up in the boat and climbing out, a way to give up that sack lunch we had packed for ourselves with our favorite chocolate chip cookies in it and did not expect to have to share with anyone else. But this is how Christ is formed in us. Jesus takes that one dollar you're going to spend on a Snickers candy bar and he uses it to buy a stroller for a mom <coughs> named Hortensia and her three-month-old baby who can't afford one themselves. Jesus takes your cast-off blanket and the sweat jacket you aren't wearing anymore and he clothes 5,000 homeless people and field workers and their children who have only rags to wear. The man at the pool shows us the proof of our spiritual cure is our rising and walking in spite of the worst things that happen to us. When Christ heals our dysfunctions, we can get out of our comfort zone and take up whatever challenge he lays on us. And no matter what our age or condition, there are still untapped possibilities within us. So the question we have to ask ourselves is what is one tiny step I can take out of my comfort zone towards living the miraculous life that God has in mind for me.